Will County was founded in the Illinois Prairie at the crossroads of several rivers. In the early days, fur traders recognized the advantage of travel from the Great Lakes to the Mississippi River and on to the Gulf of Mexico. Over the decades, the Will County economy has been steered by coal mining, limestone quarrying, and manufacturing. Farming continues to be an important commodity in much of eastern Will County. Today, Will County continues to grow and flourish with a wide variety of economic development. With our crossroads location, affordable housing, and excellent schools, it is no wonder why many families and businesses have chosen to call Will County home. Join us now as we explore another of the many facets of Will County at Work with your host, Will County Executive Larry Walsh. Hello and welcome to this edition of Will County at Work. I'm your host, Larry Walsh, and today we are visiting with one of the oldest agencies in Will County, Morning Star Mission. My guest is Marilyn Farmer, Executive Director of the Mission. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for being on the show with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, you have a, a, a wonderful story to tell about the Morning Star Mission, and it's been the longevity of it here in, in Joliet, and uh, um, I believe it opened the doors in 1909, and, uh, and uh, has played a, a major role in a lot of people's lives. Why don't you go into a little bit about the background of the Morning Star Mission, what it means, and what we, what you accomplish here. Okay, um, and you're right. In 1909, Peter McCarthy, a local businessman, founded Morning Star Mission, and he saw a need um, for a uh, place, a refuge for homeless men at that time. Um, people weren't necessarily called homeless, they were called bums and different things. Transients. Transients. Mm -hmm. And um, he saw that need here in Joliet and so he opened Morningstar Mission, a uh, faith-based organization uh, to meet the needs of uh, the men at that time. And it has been in existence ever since. And we've only actually been in three locations. Wow. And That's this is our third location. We started out on Collins Street, and then we moved over to Joliet Street. Mm -hmm. And then in 1992, uh, in Joliet Street, we had a fire that totally destroyed the building. Oh. And uh, that's when we located over here on Washington Street. Mm -hmm. And it was a very small building, uh, about 12, 1400 square feet. Uh, we had a dining room, very small kitchen, and a few offices. Mm -hmm. And then we brought in um, trailers for uh, the men to sleep in. And, you know, God has really blessed us since that time as you look at our facilities today here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're covering two blocks in our buying property and the third block. So uh, we have beautiful buildings that are possible because of the generosity of the community. And they're the ones that built these buildings. And um, so it's exciting to see that happen and to see Morningstar Mission expand. Now, uh, how, many, how, how many square feet do you have now for all the programs? That, do you got any idea that? Uh, no, no, I don't. I know how many beds we have. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, but yeah, you got a large dining room and that uh, that uh, is filled every day for three meals a day. Correct. Correct. We serve three meals a day in there. Uh, we served over 162,000 meals last year, no. and it's no questions asked. Folks just come in if they need a meal and get in line, and it's served cafeteria style, and they can have um, their meal and all they want. And we keep seeing that number increase. Um, and then we have um, residential programs, right. too. We have emergency shelter for men. We have a six-month recovery program for men from homelessness. Uh, 
Sometimes it's drug and alcohol, sometimes it's all kinds of things, lost job, uh, who knows. And then we have a drop-in educational center where folks can come and be um, for the day. And uh, especially in the summer, they can come and cool off cool here. Off, yeah. And then in the winter, um, they can come and, and warm, up. warm up and get uh, gloves, hats, coats, uh, dry socks mm -hmm. are a big thing, uh, boots. And then we have a family center where uh, it's 72 beds where mm -hmm. families can come. And we um, have single moms with children and we have intact families, mom and dad with the children. And we also have, which is a growing number, uh, we're surprised at this, single men, single fathers with their children. Oh, wow. And at any given time, we have at least three or four of them. And you would never, you just don't think about that, <clears throat> but that's very true uh, today. And um, we also are able to keep the older male children uh, with their single mother um, because that was a gap in our community. Yeah. They weren't able to stay together. Yeah. And uh, here uh, they can. And that's in the Mary L. Wheatendorf facility? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. And yeah. uh, it's a lovely, beautiful facility. Yes, it is. And they were so gracious to give us such a yeah. wonderful... Um, in memory of John Wheatendorf's wife. Yes, yeah, Mary, Mary, yes, and uh, the children's mother. And, yeah. you know, they're just such a lovely family. Yes, and, they are. Um, so we're just and so very thankful. generous and yes. very generous. So yes, they are. A beautiful building we had a fundraiser for a year, number of years ago, and, uh, and it was highly successful. So, uh, yes, it but was. But we also have another part of our uh, society is veterans mm -hmm. that take advantage of the services here at Morningstar Mission. You want to expound on that too? Sure. Uh, we have um, two veterans homes and it's permanent support to housing which means they can live in there forever and have the support of a case manager. Mm -hmm. And um, if they're on disability or if they're working, it doesn't matter. That's right. And um, they come there, they live there, they have their private bedroom, mm -hmm. and um, they can cook, they can do whatever they want there. If they don't uh, want to, they're close enough to the main dining room that right. they can walk down and have meals there. And sometimes they do, but a lot of times they cook and uh, they take care of the home just like it was their home. And um, then we do have the case managers who work with right. them and right. make sure that they get to their VA appointments and medical appointments and things like Is that. Is there a time limitation that they uh, are allowed to take part in that program? I mean, do they only? They can only be there for six months, or is there any time like low uh, element? No, there's no. not. Okay. They can live there forever. Okay. okay. Until they pass on, and um, we do have some in there. I'm sure that are going to live there forever. until that time. Is that right? And now you have how many? You have two, two, two uh, uh, homes, mm -hmm. and three or four to to a home. Three. Three to a home, okay. Mm -hmm. So so the availability of six six uh, veterans. Right. And being a veteran is the one, number one issue of that. Right. If you're not a veteran, yeah, it's you cannot. Not available. It's yeah. not available. It's not available to yeah. anyone right. else. Right. And um, we have um, a veteran in there right now. He's been in there. He was one of the first, first ones, ones to move in. Yeah. And he hadn't slept in a bed in 17 years. No. And, and it's been open, what, now about two years, three years? Uh, Something like that. Um, yeah, we have yeah. a de dedication I, back here. I think it was about four years. Four so years ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it just uh, marches is, on. <laughs> is, is, is there a waiting list? Do you have a waiting list of uh, people that are looking for that? Yes, we do. Wow. And we're looking... So there is definitely a need for the, that kind of service here in, in Joliet, Will County. Right. And we're looking at expanding that program. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just do scattered site and... Uh, 
Um, but the idea of a roof over your head, the availability to have meals, and, mm -hmm. but most importantly, counseling right. uh, really fits into what the veterans need. And that's what our government needs to do more of, is uh, get involved in that kind of services mm -hmm. for, for our veterans that have come back home. Right. And um, sometimes we've had some who, you know, have lost their driver's license or something, yeah. and then we have counselors that work with them on getting that mm -hmm. back. And um, we work on uh, obtaining vehicles for them and um, that so that they have transportation to get yeah. around and do the things they need it's to do. It's alarming the percentage of homeless people that are veterans. Oh, it is. It is a nationwide. I don't. It's in right. The, what is it? 25, 20, it, 30 percent. Yeah, it's between 25 and 30 percent yeah. of our homeless population are, are veterans. veterans. And that's um, a shame. We uh, service um, males right mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to see a facility that services females, yes. because there are a lot of them, mm -hmm. and especially um, coming back. Uh, from the war and stuff all these years and uh, you know they just have traumatic things That's happen exactly to them. exactly right, exactly right. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the cafe, uh, uh, the cafeteria downstairs um, mm -hmm. um, that uh, three meals a day and uh, yeah, every day of the year, right? Correct? Exactly. Every, We're open every, every day. Every day of the year. Right. And the number of people that have volunteered over the years is unbelievable. Uh, just huge. How many church group and, and religious groups uh, and, and uh, civic organizations that come in and volunteer for uh, putting on the meal that day by putting it on, you know, mm -hmm. serving it and stuff. Right. Uh, we have thousands. Yes, thousands. And um, last year um, we had over 24,000 volunteers wow. come through here. That is and that's usually their first entry point because yes. they love doing that. That's right. That's and right. then they see some other needs and they'll still do that and then branch that's out into great. something else. But um, that is a huge uh, volunteer effort. We couldn't probably serve all the meals we do without volunteers. Yeah, yeah yes, it would be unbelievable. And uh, uh, you would have to have a staff that would be unbelievable. Right, you know? right. And they, um, you know, not only do they serve, but some people like to come and help prepare. Mm -hmm. Some people like to help clean yep. up. Uh, we have some people who like to come and just talk and uh, befriend the guests that come in yep, each day. Yep. And you know, that's real important too because many times um, people just cares. walks by, yeah. doesn't even look at them, and mm -hmm. they feel like they're invisible. Yeah. And now here's somebody who's sitting down at the table is talking to them mm -hmm. and having them share and, and stuff like that. It's very, very important. Yes, it is. And I've been honored to be here on the, the Thanksgiving uh, dinner meal every year for the last uh, <laughs> I don't know how many years and anyway what uh, uh, you know a feeling that is of mm -hmm. um, uh, a tr turkey and all the trimmings and right. and they sure en enjoy that they sure enjoy that so let's do that's the so, great Thanksgiving banquet that's exactly right mm -hmm. exactly right so um, so if somebody wanted to um, hopefully watching this program uh, want to get actively involved or maybe belongs to a church group or something and and uh, they can get a hold of you and they make arrangements to, mm -hmm. to set that up. Is that correct? Right, they can. They can go to our website. Website, yeah. Uh, www.morningstarmission.org mm -hmm. or they can call our office at 815-722 five seven eight zero and um, they'll get set up and uh, hooked up with that well that'd be great and and I, I you know uh, the issue is I can extend an invitation out there because once you do it it is just it makes you feel so good you see the the gratification on, on mm -hmm. the faces of uh, people the, the the mothers that's got two or three children mm -hmm. that come in and they get get a meal uh, right. it's uh, it's just unbelievable and in, in order to uh, help provide that uh, 
and especially at the holiday times like right. uh, Easter and Thanksgiving and, and even Christmas and everything, uh, that uh, be, be a good program for somebody that wanted to volunteer, and uh, especially if you were in some kind of a organization mm -hmm. group. So. Yes, we have organizations, individuals, businesses. We have a lot of businesses who um, a group of employees yes, come okay. representing the business. Right. Some businesses even pay their employees while they're down here. Wow. And other ones, they just have groups come and they all enjoy it. Well, I might need to look into that myself, <laughs> you know. Maybe I bring a group from the county down here and, and, and work for an hour, hour and 15, 20 minutes uh, serving dinner or serving sure. lunch or something. Sure, that'd be wonderful. And breakfast, maybe I'll get them up early. There you go. get them down here for breakfast. <laughs> what time does breakfast start? 7 a.m. Oh, that would be an even better deal. <laughs> then they won't have to lose any time on work. There you go. <laughs> Last night I slept in my nice soft bed. The covers were clean, the pillow was puffy. I felt safe, I felt warm, I slept great. But that was last night. Tonight, I'm sleeping in this. Why am I sleeping in a box tonight? Well, it's all part of Morningstar Mission's Box City of Hope, an event they hold each year to help raise awareness and a great way to appreciate just a little bit about what the homeless go through, how they eat, how they sleep. It's a good way to raise awareness of the plight of the homeless here in Joliet and Will County. But there's lots of other reasons why people take part each year in Morningstar Mission's Box City of Hope. It helps us be aware of what um, goes around, goes on in our society and how we can help them. And it's a, it's a humbling awakening. I am here to teach compassion to my children and to, to show them that um, they're fortunate enough to live in a home. Well, I came here because so we could realize how people have to live every day and we just don't sometimes we just forget about that and we like want everything but we should be happy for what we have so i thought it was a great opportunity for us to get out here and be cold and maybe wet and <laughs> go a little a little bit hungry and uncomfortable so we can see like we do have a lot and god's blessed us with a lot and how can we share that with others each year, hundreds of individuals, families, and groups come out to the Gallowich YMCA camp to be part of the Box City of Hope. There's a band, a scavenger hunt, a pizza dinner, and a G-rated movie. Then we all crawl into our boxes to try to get some sleep. Well, here in the morning, we woke up with a new sense of awareness for the homeless. You know, I, I think because I came with the Boy Scouts, I think it kind of showed that how people have so little and how much we have to be thankful for for what we've got. Um, and I think they realized you can survive without all the things in life. Um, so I think it was a good experience. And uh, I enjoy doing it every single year and hope that next year I can do it again. So let me invite you to register today for Morning Star Mission's Box City of Hope. It's fun, it's exciting, and believe me, you'll never look at homelessness the same again. It's an experience you'll never forget. And all the programs that we've been talking about, Marilyn, uh, you can, you're proud of a brand new program just uh, uh, created earlier this uh, winter. Uh, you want to expect, uh, explain that one? Sure, we have a program, it's Beth House, and um, it's a maternity home, and it's an alter alternative to abortion. Mm. Moms, um, expectant moms can come there, and um, they receive counseling, uh, all kinds of counseling, but especially on uh, keeping their baby or adoption. Yes, right. And then they make their own decision. We don't pressure them but at all. But you give them the opportunity right. to think about it and mm -hmm. hear, you know, from right. you know people that are educated in that. Yes, and um, of course we have other classes too, but that's the main one. And uh, we opened that in February, mm -hmm. and so we're very excited about it. And um, it's going very well, and we're going to be having our first baby born in August. Oh. So yay, we've already saved one baby. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> so how, 
How does a person get involved in the Beth House? Well, they call the mission. Okay. And uh, they can either refer someone to us okay. or the person themselves can okay. call. Okay. And then we have uh, an interview process in that. And, and our, all confidential. Yeah, all uh, confidential. Totally confidential, mm -hmm. yes, yes. You don't need mm -hmm. to worry about no. anything. And so if somebody is debating that issue, then they should give you a call and you come over and get some professional uh, help then. Exactly. And um, we, have, um, we have had some pastors from churches refer people and that. And so we just take referrals from anywhere and then they go through the interview process mm -hmm. and um, then, you know, they could end up in Beth House and uh, be very safe have a very uh, secure place to live and the unique thing about this program is once the baby is born they can live there for one year afterwards wow. so that they can get on their feet uh, have a good paying job and be able to support themselves when they leave there and move into their and own not worry apartment. about having them find a babysitter mm -hmm. or right. an agency to watch them right that is great that is great mm -hmm. How many, how many do you have in, involved in the Beth House? Oh, well, at this point, we have three, okay. and that's what it's set up for. Okay. Oh, okay. Because it's in a, a beautiful private home. Okay. And we had a donor donate the home to oh, us great. for this reason. And um, we have a staff person on duty 24 hours oh, a day. Yeah. And um, so we're doing three, and as that grows, yeah. we'll add some additional homes. Oh, wonderful program. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. thank you everybody for pay, taking part in that, and especially the donor. Uh, oh, exactly. Fanti fantastic. Yes. So, well, that's a wonderful program. Let's get into another program, which is also a fund fundraiser, and one of your major fundraisers. Want uh, that's uh, coming up in September. Uh, this will be the fifth year for this, I think, is it? Is it our fifth, sixth? I think it's a sixth. Sixth, okay. Okay. Uh, again, when time uh, moves on, uh, <laughs> who's counting the days? <laughs> but anyway, it's been very, very successful. And why don't you get into and talk uh, to our viewers about what, uh, what we do on uh, the weekend, uh, Friday night in September. Okay, September 11th. Um, at the Gallowich YMCA, mm -hmm. we're having Box City of Hope, and um, it's a an event where uh, folks come out and they can sleep in a box. Yep. They bring their box, or they can bring a tent if yep. they have a right. small tent, yep. and um, they um, receive pledges, and then they um, learn about homelessness right. and the plight of the homeless and some of the very difficult situations um, they go through such as uh, finding uh, their food for the day right. uh, maybe they've had a problem and lost all their identification applying for a new social security card driver's license all of that is um, not um, very um, individually friendly it's yes. very difficult yes. to uh, to go through and navigate those That's channels right. yes. and um, so we have uh, reality things for the folks mm -hmm. to do and um, once they uh, complete uh, their uh, questionnaire that we have they can go up to the soup kitchen and get their dinner then yeah, right and um, we serve pizza and and that, and it's, uh, everybody seems to just love it up there. That's exactly right. <laughs> Pizzas and chips and yes. soda and whatever. And then um, we do have uh, a, a little fun thing, which homeless people don't have, but uh, people like to decorate their dwelling. Yeah. And so we have a little um, contest as to who has... Uh, the best decorated dwelling and the kids really get oh, into gosh. that. They go overboard. Yes, they Some do. Some of them they build and they mul it's a multi-room <laughs> uh, dwelling, you know. Yes. <laughs> and um, then we have uh, a program. We have uh, um, a youth band that comes out yes. and plays. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, 
reality testimonies from some of the guests that are here at the mission and talks about how they became homeless and what they did and how they found the mission and how their life they're changing their life here and um, that's just uh, something to motivate especially the youth yes. uh, to be aware of what can happen if you don't make good choices that's exactly right. and um, then in the end we have a, a rated G movie that we show yeah. on a big screen yeah. and then it slides out and uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful night. It's a great night to bring the whole family mm -hmm. out. All ages come. We've had from infant on up. We had one 83-year-old woman come and stay in a tent. And well, actually, she had a box, and we went and got her a tent. Yeah, and a little bit more comfortable for her. Than yes, climb, crawl, crawling into the box. Yeah. Yeah. And um, bring your own pillow. Bring bring your uh -huh. own blanket. You know and. Uh, and most of the times uh, the homeless don't have, have that uh, necessities right mm -hmm. at hand, you know. That, that's so, for sure. So it is a great evening, uh, a lot of uh, uh, camaraderie and mm -hmm. the kids get together and uh, a lot of church groups uh, uh, brought their uh, their kids there mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and a good meal for everybody and the activities is great and the most important thing is mother nature if she works with us then that's a great evening but we've had some very challenging <laughs> evenings out there <laughs> over the years we certainly have i will never forget the one where uh frost was about yeah. two inches <laughs> yeah. <thick. laughs> in the morning yeah man oh, i was, think it got down to 28 was, or something that night yeah it was unbelievable the hot chocolate went over good that night <laughs> yes. and, 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 and we went out and got some hot chocolate <laughs> and so, instead of sodas so yeah it's so. a it's just a great great evening and it is a great event for groups to participate in yes. scout groups yes. Uh, yes church groups, um, business groups, That's we have exactly a lot of right. businesses come That's out with right. their employees. Yep. So, so uh, go to our website and get the information and uh, it's a great event. Uh, we are always looking for vo uh, vo um, donors uh, that would, uh, you, could be, you could be responsible for an avenue out there. One mm -hmm. of the streets would be named after you for a certain donation. And, uh, and so we have been very fortunate that uh, the corporate world has stepped up and mm -hmm. been generous and help out. And uh, so we have a fun evening, but D definitely make a lot of money for the Morning Star Mission, who keeps putting the food and, and uh, all these programs on. That's exactly right, and um, our sponsors are very generous, and um, we really appreciate them and appreciate their support. And then, um, you know, as groups come out and uh, support us as well and individuals. Yeah, right. And it is a uh, wonderful fundraiser uh, for Morning Star Mission. Yeah. And it helps us to continue to provide yeah. those meals for folks in the dining room. And um, while you're doing all this and while you're asking for pledges and that, that should be the foremost thought in your mind yeah. uh, two dollars and five cents a meal. meal you're really providing a lot of meals for folks and we really appreciate that and Larry you have supported us through the years on this so much and we really appreciate well, that I, too thank you very much but uh, it makes me feel good that we we can you know help those that are in need of help and we might as well put a plug into Scott Slocum and WJOL and uh, and uh, your telethon every oh, year oh, around yeah. Thanksgiving time uh, right. that we have that telethon uh, and um, a call-in program and that that's a very successful fundraiser also you want to just dive sure. into that for a second uh, in November we have that yeah. and it's around based around our Thanksgiving yeah, meal, meal right. and providing meals for uh, the less fortunate yeah. at Thanksgiving and um, it is uh, on WJOL WCCQ Q, and all, star yeah, yeah. and um, we do it one morning uh, from 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. until like 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. 
And um, then in, in the afternoon, they still can call in. Can't in they? the afternoon, yeah. when uh, Kevin Collins Kevin's is on, on right, they right. can call in, and that. And um, it is a very wonderful fundraiser. And you know what? It's the community That's again right. who gets right. behind it That's and right. supports it and is very yes. generous during that holiday time that we've been yeah. able to have yeah. it so successful. It's so, it's so gratifying to hear that somebody calls in and at $2.05 mm -hmm. uh, you are supporting one person for a meal mm -hmm. and you know just uh, Scott says a call just come in and 100 people are going to have meal because of that donation you know right. so so that's 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 huge so mm -hmm. it uh, it is uh, it very very good and <sighs> successful Right, it is. And you know, it doesn't matter, like you say, if it's $2.05 providing one meal or if it's providing 100 meals. You That's put right. it all together yeah, exactly and right. you have uh, a tremendous support. Yeah, yes, tens of thousands of meals. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so, so, Marilyn, uh, as we wind down here, you know, uh, we've talked about a lot of things and the issues and, and, and the mission and, and the mission of the mission, you know. If there was one thing you wanted to let your viewers know about the mission, what would that be? I mean, if over, that's hard to pick out one thing, but uh, just an overview of, um, you know, the activities here and what mm -hmm. you would like to leave with our, with our, with our viewers uh, as, a, as a statement. Okay. Um, you know, Morningstar Mission is here because of our viewers. Yeah. And uh, they're here because, we're here because of the support of the community. And um, people come through our doors every single day, hurting, broken, hopeless. And uh, because of the generosity of this whole Will County area, uh, we're able uh, to give them some services and some alternatives and um, they're able then uh, to start working on changing their life right. and what they need. And it is amazing when someone comes in so broken and so hopeless what they look like. Yeah. And then when you see them a couple months later and they're this beautiful person yeah. with a sparkle in their eye and they can hold their head up and they can talk to you and look at you. Yeah. It's such a tremendous change, and that is the blessing of it all for me, is that I see the change that people make in their life. Mm -hmm. And I want to convey that to the donor, you know. If you're donating in kind, dropping off clothes, you're donating money, just know that your donation is staying here in Will County, and just know that someone is being helped because of that. Yes. That's beautiful. So we thank you. Thank you for all the years. How many years have uh, as executive director? Nineteen. Nineteen years. <laughs> Too long. Oh, no, no, no. There's many more left in there. So we thank you for, for your commitment. And uh, I know some days it uh, looks like uh, how are we going to get by, and then all of a sudden some mm -hmm. something happens that uh, perks you right up and we're going to make it, you know, but we are very, very blessed that we live in a, a very compassionate and, and gener gener generous uh, area here mm -hmm. in Will County, Joliet area, and, and uh, many of the municipalities. It's not just for Joliet. No. I mean, uh, uh, Mayor Clare mm -hmm. is a, a big supporter of, of yours uh, and the missions and mm -hmm. other people from us all around the area. So. Um, but your leadership has led this organization and um, down the right road, and and I, I applaud you for always looking at these new programs of need and just like the Beth House and and what you've done for the veterans uh, to kick that in gear and and how successful they they are. So thank you for all that you have done for us over the years, Marilyn. Well, Appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, it's only God working through everybody yeah, that makes exactly it work. Yeah, right. Thanks, Mom. <laughs>